Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon. And today I want to give us uh, a sobering thought. Those that are called as prophets and prophetess, one of the greatest deceptions and um, enticements of the flesh and our adversary is to move the prophet, the messenger, the oracle, the watchman away from his or her post. Friends, when it comes to the affairs of Jesus, the watchman, the one that has been waiting and sitting at Jesus' feet, when there is a level of notoriety or popularity and for some prosperity, the enemy will come in if we're not careful and begin to move you away from the preaching of repentance. Hear me very close, my friend. Some of the most profound and prolific pre preachers happen to be prophets. Personally, I have known many that could teach the deep things of God. They could really, man, when you listen to them, you'd be like, where did he get that from? Because it is so, it, it's weighty, it's meaty. It's, it's, it's things that the average person that may be a novice may choke on it because they are that novice. But what the enemy wants to do is move a prophet, most notably the prophet, because when we look into scripture, when we look into the New Testament and we look at, for instance, the life and the ministry of John the Baptist, John the Baptist was preaching repentance. And the affairs of Christ are centered around the very same thing that he preached, repentance. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 4, after Herod had John uh, put in place in prison, and soon after he was beheaded, the Bible says in Matthew chapter, verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 17, that Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If a prophet is seduced and reduced to thinking that you are no longer called to preach repentance, you have been deceived. The prophet or prophetess in maturation is not here to express through prophecy, words of wisdom and knowledge, diversity of tongues, laying on of hands, uh, miracles and healings. Friends, we know that's an expression of the supernatural. But don't let us ever forget the power of God is preaching the cross of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 18, Paul said it best. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Friends, redemption through the preaching of Christ crucified brings about the, the, the transformation, the regeneration of the spirit of a man or a woman, a boy or a girl. Regeneration is the power of God. And if the messenger is now leaving this behind and no longer do you preach re repentance, you have backslidden, prophet of God, prophetess of God. You are backslidden. There is nothing more important to God 
than the redemption of humanity through his son. That was the business of Jesus and it must remain the first thing first in our ministries to make sure, beloved, that whether you are a teacher, whether you are an exhorter, whether God is using the administration of pastor, teacher, that we keep Christ crucified as the center of it all. Let me give you an example of what the Spirit of God is really saying to us. If you are a prophet or a prophetess and you have people gathering around you in a fellowship, you're meeting in the flesh, you are having times of praise and worship and and people are, are seeing the expression of the gifts of the spirit, word of wisdom and knowledge and prophecy and healings and miracles in your midst. In a group of, let's say, a thousand, how many of them are actually sanctified and living and expressing righteousness in their lives? Righteousness is to be right with God, to be in standing with God through Christ Jesus, which then brings about peace and joy. So, so the deception is if the prophet, if the oracle no longer preaches repentance, because now you're deep, you, you, you're deep now. You, you want to just teach deep things. No, out of that thousand people, how many are in sin? So if the prophet, the oracle, sits down the business of Christ, the affairs of heaven is always redemption. So we could teach um, the word of God, but we have to always leave room in these fellowships, brothers and sisters, to preach repentance. It has to stay the main thing. The main thing must remain. Jesus suffered for the sins of humanity. So if we move away, brothers and sisters, we have fallen. We must understand we will not be popular. We will not be liked. We'll be, we will be scoffed <laughs> and scorned. We will be persecuted because the message of righteousness transcends it all. Because what does it profit a man or woman? If you receive your prophecies, you receive your physical healings, and you go right back into your lifestyle of whoremongering and lying and stealing and cheating and the things that we know God hates, you go right back to being bitter and angry and slanderous, but you got a physical healing. But your soul, your soul is still under the control and the dominion of your flesh. And that prophet, that oracle never goes fishing in the, in the fellowship to, to find those who have become wayward in their fellowship with God. As I close this exhortation, I challenge you, brothers and sisters, to keep 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 upon your hearts. And I challenge you, brothers and sisters, to never forget this dispensation of the Holy Ghost is to bring us through sanctification and righteousness that we may experience peace and joy with God through Christ. And how can the people know or hear if they have fallen from the kingdom, if the messenger, if the prophet, if the oracle muzzles that message, repentance is a safeguard from God's wrath. Repentance is a gift. Repentance is an opportunity to get things right with God. Never forget brothers and sisters, that's the business that Jesus was about. When his parents were looking for him, he said, do you not know I'm about my father's business? Don't ever think I'm somewhere playing around. Jesus was making it clear. 
That's the father's business to make sure, brothers and sisters, as the writer wrote in Hebrews chapter 10, that we provoke one another, that we be sure to poke one another at times to make sure that we are not deceived by our own sin. Till next time, he or she that has the ear to hear, God bless.